What's going on? Welcome to the second SQLite tutorial. In the first tutorial, we showed you guys how to do a really basic uh, input here. Uh, but of course, we were manually typing that or hard coding that, and that's obviously not the ideal situation. Uh, so in this tutorial, I'm going to show you guys how you can input actual variables into your database, because it's going to be pretty rare that you input something uh, hard like this. So anyways, uh, the first thing that we're going to go ahead and do is add a few more imports at the top here. So we're going to import time, import date time, and then we're going to also import random. Uh, time and date time, we're going to use time obviously because we're populating Unix, date time to create our date stamp, and then random to create the value, uh, the value there. So uh, we're going to come down here, we're going to make a new function, make some space here just so it's uh, aligned right. Some people complain about white space. Um, it's usually there just to make it easier to see, just for the record. Anyway, uh, define, and then we're going to call this one dynamic data entry. And what we're going to do here is we're going to define some variables. So the Unix will just be time.time, .time. so this is just your timestamp. Uh, then what we're going to do is we're going to create a date stamp from the timestamp. So that'll be date equals the string version of date time dot date time dot from time stamp uh, Unix and then it's dot string from time or strf time um, and then you give the um, I'm trying to think of the proper word here the structure basically that you want it to be so it's percent capital Y and that's for a four digit year and then dash percent lowercase m for a two digit month percent d same thing as month space capital or uh, space and then uh, capital H and then colon capital M colon capital S so again this is like a you're formatting for your date stamp so we're taking a Unix stamp and we're converting it to a date stamp so it would be a four digit year two digit month two digit day typical hour two digit, typical minute two digits, and then seconds, okay? Now, we're gonna say the keyword. In this case, we're just gonna keep the, keep things as Python because who cares about anything else? Then we're gonna say value is gonna be equal to random.rand range, and we're gonna say anything from zero to 10. Now we're gonna run an execution, so c.execute. And again, this would be uh, insert, whoops, all caps, insert into stuff to plot. And then again, um, you could go straight into values like this, but instead what you're actually gonna do is first you're gonna specify the order or the specific columns that you're gonna insert into. So Unix, date stamp, keyword, value. It just so happens this is the actual order of the columns in our database. But you could switch these around. You can even leave, in normal SQL, you can leave them blank and it will just not insert data for that row. That's that's acceptable. But what you can't do is you can't say you insert into these four columns and then only insert three variables into those columns. That will result in an error. So insert into stuff to plot. The, we definitely we want to insert into these columns and then how we do the variables is like so. After that, you say capital values, and then in parentheses again, you have four values. So question mark, comma, question mark, comma, question mark, comma, question mark. Now, it's slightly unfortunate that this is how SQLite does things. Um, my SQL is going to use um, the, the string, so it will be percent %s. So that's one major difference between the SQL queries themselves that you'll be writing is SQLite's gonna use these question marks whereas my SQL would use percent %s. So keep that in mind if you ever do make the switch over. So um, the next thing that we're gonna do is comma, hit enter. You don't have to, you could keep it on the same line but usually people hit enter there because this is a long line and you don't want it just running way off the screen. So insert into stuff to plot that, and then comma, and then you put in the variable. So Unix, date, keyword, value. Okay, so, um, so that should be it. That should work. What is that one thing that we need to do after we insert stuff? That's right, we need to commit, con.commit. And I'm actually not gonna run c.close and con.close here because um, I wanted to explain those in the last tutorial, but here, Typically, when you run some sort of uh, command, 
Uh, when you do a con.commit, commit, so you're like our intention here on this function is we're going to insert about 10 data points. So you don't want to close the connection every time and reopen the connection for every insertion. That's a waste of time and probably some processing on the side of uh, SQL. So especially if you're running like a web server that's doing a lot of high input output, that would be just suicide. So anyway, you really just commit and basically at the very beginning of your batch of SQL and at the very end, so at the very beginning you'll do your connection, so you would define your connection here. Um, so this defining the connection actually starts the connection and then defining the cursor starts up the cursor and then when you're all done using them, that's when you really should close them. So we'll come down here and um, and then what we're going to do is we're just going to define a for loop here. So uh, where is our, <laughs> this is our data here. So let me pull it up now. Actually, what I'll do is I'll make a bunch of white space under that stuff. There we go. So now we're going to generate a for loop. So we're going to say for i in range of 10, what do we want to do? We're going to run dynamic data entry. Whoops. We're going to go ahead and sleep for one second every time. Obviously, normally in SQL, you would never <laughs> purposely add a sleep, but we're just doing that so the timestamp will go up a second. That's just the only reason we're doing that. Now, uh, we'll go ahead and c.close, and then we'll do a con.close. And um, because we have that kind of junky data uh, from before, what I'm going to go ahead and do is uh, we're going to come over to our tutorial here. I'm going to delete that database that exists right now. Uh, are we using? Oh, it's open. OK, let's uh, close that. Try again. Cool. Um, so we've I've deleted that and then I'm going to come to create table let that let that thrive again. So we create the table and then we'll insert in every 10 sec or every second. Let's run that really quick. Hopefully we don't get errors. I saw the database or the yeah, the database pops up. Hopefully it's getting populated as we speak. It should take about 10 seconds. So, uh, while we wait for that and before we check it, I think it's actually done. So, I guess I won't start talking again. Let's open it up. Uh, browse the data. Sure enough, there are, are uh, your data points, random values, and all that. So we've got 10 rows that we can actually start to work with now. So in the next tutorial, um, I'm just going to run it a couple times while I'm talking. In the next tutorial, what we're going to do is now that we've learned how to insert data into a database, we need to learn how to actually pull data from a database uh, and read from it. So in the next tutorial, what we're going to be talking about is how to read from a database. So if you have any questions or comments up to this point, feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support and subscriptions. And until next time.